all right guys so um welcome back to 25 high this is going to be a little bit different of a video uh not to get too much into production details uh <clears throat> what i've been doing this usually happens middle of the season about every year i'll just film for like a week or a little over a week and not do anything with the footage and then at some point i just compile some of it together throw some stuff together and it turns into a video well i've been doing that for a while and i decided like i decided today i'm going to change it up a little bit hopefully this is going to turn into like a bit of a series it might be kind of an extended series because a lot of this is like super long-term stuff and a lot of it super short term but uh hopefully this will turn into a bit of a series but my mom my the land that she grew up on she still owns it and it's about 10 acres i think about eight of it is woods and it's all for the most part it is long leaf pines that are probably 20 something years old and i say 20 something as in could be close to 30 could be like right around 20 i don't really know but uh, the land has been kind of neglected. You know, life happens. You know, stuff happens. Um, <clears throat> we haven't been able to keep up with it like we wanted to. But uh, I want to come out here and do some restoration to it. There, This is the place I shot my first deer. It's the food plot. It's all grown up. The road to get back there is all grown up. But I've got so many memories out here. I shot my first deer out here. I watched the first deer I ever watched my dad kill was out here um, just a lot uh, a lot of memories but I'm gonna sit in my truck here soak up the last little bit of this uh, last little bit of this heat and kind of explain what I want to do so I'm just gonna set my camera up here see if it'll actually work the week of Thanksgiving this year I went to Ecuador and uh, I went there on a school trip we went to this farm that was a, it was a regenerative agriculture farm, Los Arabelos, Arbelo, something like that, uh, that is the farm. But they, it's a bamboo farm, but they also do a lot of other stuff. They do regenerative agriculture, and that's something I've been in, in, I've been uh, interested in for a long time is regenerative agriculture. But before this Ecuador trip, all I had thought about it was crimping or a roller crimper and a no-till drill and food plots that's all i knew about it but after going to uh going to ecuador and visiting this farm and learning what we did um it's just opened my eyes to so many more possibilities of how you can manage land to provide benefit or to restore the forest and create diversity and just improve the habitat to a degree where it not only helps the deer it'll help them grow bigger it'll help them do whatever be healthier but it'll also help the entire ecosystem of this little chunk of land so my goal is to turn this eventually turn this little eight eight ish acres of woods into a biodiverse like epicenter of just highly nutritional food and uh super healthy forest and just that's my goal now how close i can get it i i don't know yet but just to start to the very beginning of it is uh i just need to get this road cleared out and i need to get the food plot cleared out i've got a whole list of things i'm gonna do and then once i get those done i mean my list is gonna keep expanding and it's probably gonna be like one step forward two steps back for a little while but uh I'm pretty excited about this it's been something that's been on my mind for a while but uh like i say first step is getting this road cleared and I, well i'm probably going to just clear the road out just a little bit to where i can walk back there without like ducking under stuff and crawling through vines because that's what i've been doing <laughs> and then once i get back there i'm going to actually start working on the food plot a little bit but what i'm going to do is so one thing that we learned in ecuador at the farm was they would uh they would take sticks and debris and compost and stuff like that and just build these like seed beds for uh to plant trees in and one thing that uh that they were doing there was taking these clippings and uh compost and 
leaf litter and stuff like that and making these rows down this field that they were going to plant limes on and then once the limes grew they would have other you know other species that would help build up the organic matter in the soil they would help with erosion help with uh nitrogen sequestering carbon sequestering stuff like that but also produce fruits because this is the goal is to make it a sustainable farm that also is rebuilding the ecosystem so anyway the, once the, once everything gets mature there's some native trees there's some limes there's some bananas there's some whatever then they're going to plant shade dependent plants underneath that so then that every layer of every plant has a purpose and every layer of the of the forest uh, provides some sort of benefit so all that's to say I'm gonna take those tactics that I learned and apply it to this land and hopefully turn this into a really really cool place to hunt and just visit and stuff so that's my goal uh, I know this has been a lot of talking but basically the rest of the today's video is gonna just be chopping stuff down so let's get after it <laughs> Well, from here back, it actually looks kind of like a road. Obviously, right here, there's a big, well, there's a vine right there, but right here, big tree top fell down. It's all rotten now, but it's got all these vines and mess all over it. We can walk next to it, though. This was easier than I thought it would be, but, I mean, obviously, it's still way too grown up to get a truck or a tractor back here I think I have to take a chainsaw my, my goal today was just to get it where I could walk back here I think the last thing I cut was right about here so we got a little bit more to do up here but this is these are the long leaves right here it's a really big one for this land but they're all throughout there just a lot of undergrowth under underbrush big a couple big oak trees right on the perimeter um before I start clearing again uh, one thing about this land so I want to come through and burn it I want to get like the pine woods to look like pine woods again one thing so a couple things real quick somewhere off to my right there's this old creek bottom that comes out of an old cow pasture and of course once it gets in the woods it's like any other creek bottom creek uh smz whatever you want to call them it's really really thick around here so when i come through and burn i'm gonna leave like a bigger than normal buffer around that uh clear cut or around that not clear cut around that smz the creek bottom and i want to leave that as thick as possible but i want the rest of the woods to look like pine woods are supposed to i want all these long leaves to be fairly open and eventually once they grow up and they create a bit of a canopy in 40, 50 years, I want it to look like a longleaf grass savanna with a few dispersed oak trees in it. First thing, I want to have a buffer around that creek bottom. So that, that'll be like the bedding. There's a lot of thick around this land, but that's going to be the bedding on the land. And then I also want to plant fire dependent or fire adapted oak trees in the pines and I don't know if that's really a thing it's just that I've noticed some oak trees some species of like I think it's might be blackjack some white oak species maybe something along those those lines there's a couple oaks that do better in fire than others and I like to have those in uh, in with the pines but I think we're gonna do just a little bit more clearing and make it to the plot start our oak uh, planting excursion there.
So this whole area right here used to be a food plot. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come in here one of these days with something, tractor and chainsaw and mess, and really clear it out. Yeah. Looks a little rough right now, but it one day will be a food plot if I have to hire somebody to come in here and clear it out. I'm gonna get to a spot back here where I'm going to plant I think I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna try to set up like three quote unquote seed beds. And the goal is to just build up organic matter in a spot, a couple spots, to where when I go come in here to plant the, um, when I come in here to plant the sawtooth, I should have like two year old seedlings when I actually come in here to plant, roughly. And I want there to be like this solid little spot of high quality organic matter that's being built into the soil. Hopefully that'll make it healthier, make it take root quicker. And all the organic matter that it drops, number one, it's gonna drop mast eventually, hard mast acorns in the plot, which is good. Um, but two, it'll help, hopefully the leaf matter will do more to help build up the organic mat matter of the soil than it will to, than the oak tree will be drawing out all that organic matter, if that makes sense. But anyway, let's start cutting. I got two, I'm gonna put probably one at each corner. One kind of a little closer in the middle, almost. I think. Alright guys, so basically what I'm doing is creating a really sloppy compost pile. This is all I'm going to do for this one today. As you can tell, the first layer is sticks, then I put some leaves, then I put some more sticks, then I put some leaves, and then I found some rotten sticks over there, so I figured I might as well put them on there. But the reason I'm doing this, I want to show you something. So, first off, all of this, all this is doing is creating a crazy influx of decomposers as far as microorganisms and what that's going to do all the breaking down of all of this organic material and all the microorganisms that are going to flood in here it's going to create a community of tiny things that are making the soil healthier basically and what just to kind of explain how that actually worked or, or the result of what this is doing 
you see this ground right here how sandy it is this all used to be food plot like i just mentioned this is all food plot it's sandy like you dig in it's just this dead sand you come over here where i was digging up this stuff there's been years of organic mate organic material built up here when you dig in the ground obviously there's roots but it's a lot more airy and it's darker it's not as like sandy still sandy but there's a lot more life in this soil than there is in that sand over there so basically i'm just trying to create a little hole of that right there and eventually this whole food plot food plot <laughs> one of these days it will be a food plot but one, whenever it is i've got some techniques to turn this whole old food plot into more like less of this white stuff and more of that darker more full of life stuff so i think that one's good for now when i come back i'm gonna kind of make it bigger and bigger i'm also eliminating the competition that's right there because there's less stuff living in that one spot as far as trees sucking the nutrients out of the ground so um if this is boring to a lot of you guys i totally understand it but it'll all be worth it one of these days i hope <laughs> so if you are interested in this please leave a comment down below and tell me tell me how much you like it whether or not you like it and what you want to other stuff along these lines that you want to see but uh, this is just like the first little video of it of what i'm doing so i'm just going to get finished with the rest with I think I'm gonna make two more right here today, and then we're gonna kind of move on to whatever else. Well, here's a uh, sloppy compost pile number two. It's something a little bit different with this one. I made it a little bigger, and I took all the excess. I don't want to call it waste because it's not gonna be wasted, but uh, there was a lot of extra like big sticks uh, laying around, and I just laid them around the back side it's kind of a slope so I don't think erosion is too big a deal but it should help keep it in one spot maybe I don't know but I think that's enough for today I got some other stuff I want to do today so the next here in a little bit you're gonna see me planting my sawtooth oak acorns and hopefully before those get ready to actually put into the ground I will have these these woods looking at least a little better and hopefully by then i'll have a couple of these established in the woods or i don't know something along those lines i just know i've got a dozen sawtooth oak acorns and i want them to provide the best benefit to, to me and the wildlife that they can and by benefiting the wildlife they're benefiting me because big monster bucks you know come out of the woods and start eating acorns and i'm up i'm up there with a bow you know ready to snipe me. ideally <laughs> that's gonna hope that's probably gonna be a couple years down the line hopefully not much longer than that but anyway uh i know this is different than what we normally do but i wanted to change it up a little bit show you guys some of the things that's running through my mind as to how i want to like start doing things in the future and if you guys are interested in this type of thing please let me know in the comments and i'll start doing it a little more um but anyway after this video, we'll get back to hunting stuff for a little while. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm putting, I'm uh, about to start planting those sawtooths uh, in these planters. And what I've done is I've got about half, I don't know how well you can tell it here, but half of it is let them fill about halfway up with just field dirt not much organic matter it's just dirt and then we have the top half with stuff like this this is actually from in a little oak grove in my backyard so it's what oaks grow in and what they naturally would uh germinate in is something like this so we're gonna get these all filled up get the salt tooth.
All right, well, here's the uh, acorns. They've been stratifying in my fridge for uh, a little over 60 days, which the recommended time is 60 days. Uh, by the way, I know all the words, just don't know. I don't really know if I'm doing any of the rest of this right. I may know terminology, but that's about it. But uh, I'm gonna crack this open real quick. That's probably terrible lighting. So this, so first off, my dog's coming over here. <laughs> First off, this is a uh, this is just a Ziploc with um, some moist, sandy soil in there. That's what they said to put it in on the internet. I don't know if this is the right packaging. I don't know if this is the right consistency or whatever, but this is what I'm doing all this for. That is a big, pretty sawtooth oak acorn. And that right there is absolute deer candy. So, what I was reading was you, well, hey, Boudin. <laughs> a couple of things I was reading. You got to stratify them for like 30 to 60 days or 40 to 60, something like that. And uh, it's, it's going to get warm here. I don't really know exactly what to do. Part of me wants to just let nature like kind of do its thing, which is kind of what I'm doing. I'm just helping out nature. <laughs> but uh, part of me wants to like, put this in like a, such a controlled environment to guarantee as many of these acorns to actually turn into trees as possible. So I'm in, I'm trying to find a balance between the two. So uh, yeah, it's going to get cold again, but it's about to get warm. Um, basically I got all the, what I'm actually doing, I've got all the uh, pots lined up here. Um, I watered them and I'm thinking for some reason that I need to kind of warm up these pots before I put them in shade because the one website said they like uh, light shade which would mean like mostly sunlight with a little bit of shade in the, during the day I think it's like a quarter of the day or less of shade so uh, I think I'm going to leave them right here for a while which is full sun and then move them right over here where Boudin's eating dirt you can see there's a little bit of shade here and I'll just kind of leave them there until they germinate and then find like a better place for them probably. But uh, that's my plan. Um, we'll see if it works. Anyway, we got all of them planted. We got every single acorn planted in a pot. Um, hopefully we have 12 sawtooths at some point. But if you enjoy this kind of video, if you enjoy like habitat improvement or habitat type stuff or just planting or anything along these lines, drop us a comment down below and tell us what you, what you think. Tell us what else you want to see. And uh, if you have any resources on stuff like this, drop those in the comments as well. Like, what should I do about those, about that longleaf uh, plantation, basically that's now just a yopon plantation. Like, should can I just burn it or should I come in and clear it out? I don't know, um, just stuff like that. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Always remember to live by 25 high.